uh, what do you make of the media reports that first came out about the fact that Russia may have been paying um, the Taliban to, to attack U.S. or coalition forces? Well, um, the, first, the first thing I, I, I noticed, because I, I work for U.S. media and I uh, read all the major newspapers every day, uh, is how thinly sourced that story was and how it seemed calculated really to inflame American emotions. Uh, but it didn't really have a lot of detail, like names, places, dates, things that journalists could follow up on. Um, so I did what I could do, which was to uh, talk to Russian security experts. I can't obviously phone up the GRU and ask them and, and hope to get a useful answer out of them. But there is a range of people in, in Moscow here who do know uh, Russian policy, Russian security interests, and, and they all laughed at the story. Mm. Uh, they believe it's, it's an element of this bureaucratic civil war that's going on in Washington in which Russia is just a boogeyman. It plays a certain role uh, in, in internal American debates. Uh, and they say that uh, to do such a thing, first of all, it's, it's not in the traditions of the GRU or any other Russian intelligence agency to go bounty hunting uh, and not, uh, you know, like indiscriminately for some I mean, any American soldiers, that it, it makes no sense in terms of Russia's long-term policies in Afghanistan, which are not to hasten an American withdrawal. Uh, the main Russian concern, as I'm, I'm sure it is in Pakistan as well, is uh, the fear that Afghanistan would become a failed state again, that um, extreme Islamists would take over uh, if there's an abrupt withdrawal. So the, the Russians say we, we, we wouldn't do anything to hasten that or to aggravate the prospect of negotiations for a more orderly withdrawal. 